Well, come on and put your hands together. I shouldn't have even had to tell you to get up out of your seat and give God some praise on this morning. Whether you're in the sanctuary or online, we came to lift up the resurrected Savior, for he is not dead, he is alive. He did die. I said he did die. But that's not how the story ended. He got up with all power, Holy Ghost power, and he is alive forevermore. Now open your mouth and praise that. The question was asked, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He ain't here, but he has risen. Come on and praise him. He deserves it. He demands it. And he desires it. Had it not been for the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, we wouldn't be here today. And I can't tell it like you can tell it what the Lord has done. Now put your hands together. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Blessings and peace to you from First St. John Cathedral. 2401 East Berry Street is where we're hanging out with the resurrected Savior. Where well, the one and only Bishop Kenneth B. Spears is our pastor. Would you join in with us as we prepare to read our mission statement? Scripture will be raised by Elder Athea Ware. Prayer will go forth by Eric, uh, Elder Eric Dees, after which you'll be in the hand of our gate lifters. The mission statement of the First St. John Cathedral is to build a ministry that reestablishes confidence in God, the body of Christ, pastors and our preachers in the local assembly, in the communities where we live, Hebrews 10 and 35. Now celebrate like you are resurrected today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 45, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what's written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually in the temple, praising God. Amen, amen. Let us bow. Oh, gracious Father, we just thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. We thank you in advance, God, for what you're about to do, oh God. As your word goes forth, oh heavenly Father, God, hung down heads will be lifted up, oh God. Weeping eyes will be dried, oh God. God, folks will be healed, oh heavenly Father, God, at the preaching of your word this morning, oh God. We lift up our man of God this morning, God. We pray off heaven, this God. We pray preaching power, oh heavenly Father, God. You stand up in him, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, in a mighty way, God. We thank you, God, for dying for our sins, oh God. God, but we shout hallelujah, God, because you got up early, Father, one Sunday morning with all power in your hand, oh God. Now rain down in this place, oh God, like never before, oh God. And it's in Jesus' name, it's in that name, Father, that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Now, this Sunday, we reflect and we think about the blood. I said we think about the blood, how he hung, bled, and died for our sins so that we might be here today 
So we can't help but think about the hymns that got us here to where we are today. So we gonna mix a little bit of the old with the new.
holiness and his throne. Come on, y'all, help me sing this. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holiness and his throne. Hey, dream part, let me hear you say. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is gone. Isn't he beautiful?
thank you for those of you that are standing because we are resurrected folk. Come on, somebody. He had to come and get some of us out of some things. Hallelujah. If you're here, amen, this morning and you're a guest, we're asking that you would stand with us. Hallelujah. If you're in the sanctuary and you are a guest, would you please stand? Certainly those of you online, we bless God for you. Hallelujah. If you're a guest in the sanctuary, please stand. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless God for you. Amen. Our hearts were made glad that you chose the first St. John Cathedral for your worship experience. We're not asking that you would say anything. We've got a few things we want to say to you. First of all, the ushers have in their possession a card. We ask that you would take one, fill it out, and turn it in after service. We have a gift for you. And then we want to tell you this. The Holy Ghost is going to show up in this place. In fact, he is here right now. And then secondly, amen, Bishop Kenneth B. Spears is going to preach a rhema word. And then thirdly, we declare that your life will never be the same. In fact, we wrote a song just for you. But at this time, we would like to bless God for brother and sister Jackson from Tennessee that normally worships with, with us online. They are in the sanctuary. Come on and celebrate them. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise for the people of God that came to worship the Lord our God. Hallelujah. And at this time, we have a song that we wrote for you. Amen. If you'll continue to stand, our gate lifters, amen, is going to love on you. Praise the Lord. Welcome you, the first saints of saints, where the spirit is and we greet you. the Lord we pray you feel welcome hallelujah at this time it has been slated a man for special presentations through speech by our children come on and celebrate them as we know that they are going to render words that are surely to bring God some glory after which we will have a sermonic selection and then the next voice that you will hear will be that of our pastor None other than Bishop Kenneth B. Spears. Now when he get to this place, you ought to shout hallelujah. When he preached the gospel, you ought to shout glory to God. And every time his name is called, fire ought to break loose in this place. Come on and celebrate the kids as they come. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's go ahead and encourage our little people. Come on up front. No. Come on up front. Have a seat right here. Let's move rap, 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 rapido. Let's move rapido. Let's move quickly. Let's move expeditiously. Let's go, little people. We will begin with a welcome by Mason.
welcome, welcome, welcome this beautiful Easter day. With, welcome to the house of God when we pray, when we sing, worship, and pray. Get, get ready to enjoy yourselves what we have to say. We want to share with you why Christ died on the cross that day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Easter day. Amen. We have next KJ, my prayer to Christ. My prayer to Christ, Christ, I thank you for what you did when you were nailed to the cross. You did exactly what you did. I mean, said, you took my sins along with you. Christ, I thank you because you didn't have to die. You obeyed your heavenly Father and did it anyway. I thank you, Christ, for being my Lord and Savior. Christ, I thank you for showing me unmerited favor. Christ, I thank you. This I pray. We next have Jordan. It's time to dance, it's time to sing. Jesus is Lord for everything. Happy Easter. Ethan. Bound in chains. Bound in chains. I was born into a world full of sin. I was bound in chains and refused to let Christ in. I was holding on to the things of the world, it seemed. I feel dirty, unloved, and unclean. Today my heart is filled with love because I realized why he died on the cross. And I know his blood has made me pure. Heaven is my eternal home, I am sure. Landon. He was carried away. Caden. Y'all all know the story, and yes, it is true. Jesus rose from the dead to save me and you. Happy Easter. Dre. He loves me. He loves me. Now we all know this is an Easter tradition. Jamerson, Deontay, Christ died. Jesus loves me. Today I'm happy and I am free. Tyler. Jesus Christ. J is for joy that only Christ can give. E is for eternal life that he promised us. S is for suffering he endured for you and me. You is for understanding. He knows what we go through. S is for sinless. He was born without sin. C is for crucif crucifixion. He died and 
such a cruel way. H is for hope that he gives us each day. R is for race, the race one he rose from the dead. I is for... Intercession. He talks to God for all who believe. S is for sacrifice. He saved his life for the world. T is for throne where he sits and watches all. Madison, no greater love. A single silent tear fills to a sea of love. A single branch of peace born on the wings of a dove. A single man whose love could span the ages. A single heart of love that free others in their cages. A single crown of thorns placed upon a king. A single song of sorrow the angels chose to sing. A single death, a single cross, a single act of love. A single man, a single life all sent from above. Caleb. He came Jesus, back to life. Jesus was once dead. I saw him hang his head. Three days later, he came back to life. He was among his people for a while. Then he ascended back into heaven to prepare a place for all who believe that he was once dead but came back to life. Eli. I honor you. I honor you. God, you are humbled. Many times I saw you tumbled all your way to the cross, but you got back up and continued up the hill. God, you deserve honor. I honor you. Amen. Dre. Dre. Come on, Pat. He loves me. Amen. I am happy as I can be. Christ died for you and me. Cece. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And last, but certainly not least, one of the most cutest things, and this is her first Easter speech, so everybody be very, very patient with her, and let's encourage her. Presley. This is Miss Clara's baby. Let's encourage all of our children. That is our speech.
all we can say this morning is the cross. <laughs> the cross that set me free. Hallelujah.
the Lord everybody come on put your hands together and bless him come on this is resurrection Sunday this is the day the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are glad and aren't you glad to be alive aren't you glad to be saved aren't you glad to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost come on open your mouth unto the Lord this is not a day where we are victims we are victors come on we've been covered by the blood of Jesus I said we've been covered by the blood of Jesus for that alone we ought to give him thanks right about now you ought to be able to think of at least one thing that God has done for you if he didn't do it, you and I would be in a horrible place. But because he did that one thing, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my heart cries out, hallelujah. My mind cries out, hallelujah. My spirit cries out, hallelujah. Oh, how we bless him now. Come on right where we are. Father in heaven, how we, we bless you and thank you, God, for this wonderful day. It really is a great day. We thank you, God, that you gave your son. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave your life. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you provide the guidance 
comfort and encouragement and the teaching and the training that we need in this season. And so God, we, even before we get started, thank you for getting up from the dead. You live today. Hallelujah. You ascended to go home to be with the Father, but then you empowered us to be major witnesses. And so we say thank you. Now, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I cancel pain's assignment. I declare right now, Lord, I come against you, Satan. I declare this pain will not hamper or hinder the preaching of the gospel, but the word of God will be released in this house. Open our minds, our hearts, and our spirit. And then God allow your word to penetrate our hearts. We love you and praise you so much for your goodness. And Lord, when we've done all that you have assigned for our hands and hearts to do this day, we'll be gracious and we'll be careful always to give you the praise because you deserve it all. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I want real quickly, uh, Brother Dylan, to come here to the stage and Brother Ethan to come to the stage and uh, Brother Joshua to come to the stage. Hallelujah. He would not come down from the cross just to So listen, I called them to the stage because they made the A and B honor roll. Let me tell you, you might want to hold on to that a little bit, put it close in a safe place, Lord Jesus. Listen, I am serious about what we call stage time. I'm doing everything within our power to help push our children and our youth to move to that next level. We make enough lists in terms of school. We ought to at least make the dean's list or the honor roll. Amen. So I'm encouraging. And then parents, you ought not cheat your child from this stage time. Amen. I'm sure there are others of you who had great grades, but you just didn't participate. Amen. Amen. You left money on the table. I was like, oh, is that all? Oh, bless his holy name. Amen. Listen, what a great privilege it is to have family in the house today. Amen. So blessed. We were... We were in Memphis, and uh, we were talking about the Lord, and uh, they were watching and listening to the broadcast, and, and like the man who says, what does him of me? Uh, and so we said, we can take you in as a member right now. And we did that in Memphis, Tennessee. And so we are blessed to have, have them, all of our guests, we praise God for you. Come on, one more time, celebrate our guest today. Amen. Now, you already know I need your prayers. Amen. Just create an atmosphere so preaching will be easy. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, turn with me, if you will, to Jude, the book of Jude, verse 24 and 25. Jude, verse 24 and 25. 
Amen. Listen at what the Bible says. I've read it both in the King James and the NIV. I will, during preaching, will reference the King James Version. But for our hearing today, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, both now and forever. Amen. 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 I want to talk today from just that one word, now. Let me, let me open the message today by sharing with you that uh, this sermon was birthed, it was born, and of course breathed upon uh, in, at the end of the closing of our worship on last Sunday at Watauga. It was an amazing worship both in the 8 a.m. service and of course, even at the 8.30 worship, a 9.30 worship, if you've never been to Watauga to worship, you ought to put that on your agenda. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I was completing the sermon and the Holy Spirit led me to pray. To pray specifically for, for our children, for our youth, and for young adults. In the midst of that prayer, the Holy Spirit led me to call uh, little brother Eli to come as he did to the pulpit, standing beside me, allowed me to hold his hand and pray for him. In that process of prayer, it came about because of a conversation he and his mother and I had uh, concerning questions about spiritual things. I can't remember, how old is Eli? Six, six years old, and at the age of six, he's asking questions about spiritual things. Lord have mercy. When I've called him to the pulpit and began to pray, I'm holding his hand, and in the midst of the prayer, the Lord said these words, now pray for armed babies armed babies mothers who have babies in their arm lord have mercy babies that haven't begun to walk yet babies that are still eating on baby food and drinking milk undeveloped in many areas God said pray for them give time and purpose and to pray for the babies that are armed babies Holy Spirit said now ask parents who hold babies in their arm to either stand or to lift those babies up so that we can give them back to God. It was a great move of God, a great move of the Lord. And so during the end of that worship, after we finished out in the sanctuary, I'm sitting in the office and I say, God, what was that all about? Here's what God said to me. He said, this next shift is going to be a place where I'm going to make great impartation into the babies that their parents are having to carry. Somebody missed that. So I asked the question, well, God, 
You are all powerful. You're all knowing. And you, you, you make deposit in all of our lives. He says, yes, but this next shift is going to be for babies that I will make a double portion. I start asking the Lord even more questions because I wanted to know, why not do that for this next group? God said, here's the challenge. The challenge is that there are, there are children, there are youth, and there are young adults who are saved. He says, but they have not begun to walk in the place I predestined for them. I was shaken because I'm saying, God, you want me to release that? He says, throughout the Bible, I've had someone to stand and talk about the condition of the heart and the condition of the spirit and the condition of the body of Christ. He said, either preach my word or sit down. Let me just pause and share with you. This is not about you. It's about my obedience and my loyalty to God. This, this is not anything new. I've been preaching for 43 years. And I've always followed uh, the dictation of God because I wanted to make sure I was accurate. I wanted to make sure that I was preaching a word that God will bless. And so I said, God, then what is my role in this? He said, this shifting, this deposit that you are about to make in the lives of babies uh, that are in their parents' arms. And God says, here's what I need. I need you to preach a now word. I need you to preach a word of now, he says, because there's an emergency. He says that it is urgent. It's, it's urgent. There is an emergency. He says that I'm able to breathe on the babies early. God finished the conversation by saying, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to guard their lives. I'm going to build a hedge around them and protect them because the deposit that I'm about to make in their life, I don't want to give the enemy access to destroy what I've created them to be. Help me, Lord Jesus. So I said, God, you mean to tell me that's a word you want me to deal with on, on Resurrection Sunday? He says, yes. He says, but preach that word now unto him who's able to keep you from falling or stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, the power, dominion, in one text says, authority through Jesus Christ our Lord. He says, when you preach that text, you give me access to put a hedge around them. Lord, help me preach this text. Now, I hear you. Some of you are saying, well, I don't have an armed baby, but you, if you have a child, if you have a grandchild, if you have a God child, God is saying to you that you got to begin to build a prayer hedge around your children because he's, that doesn't mean he stopped making deposits. It doesn't mean that he stops uh, providing the anointing upon the lives of young people. But God says, I need a heart that is willing to say, God, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to be, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm willing to do that. And God is saying, there can be no standing on the fence. 
You're going to either be cold or you're going to be hot. And God said that there are, there are people that I've made a deposit in their life. And this is a word for even adults. He says, I made a deposit in your life and you have chosen to put me on hold. You become satisfied just with a Sunday morning worship. You, you become satisfied with hearing and reading the word of God at, uh, on, at your leisure or on times when you are in trouble and you need God to deliver you. God says, I need, in this season of shifting, I need some people that is willing to make me a priority, him. As a matter of fact, how are your children going to make Christ a priority if he hasn't become a priority in your life? How, how is Jesus, through the aid of the Holy Spirit, going to make impartation in your child's life if there are reasons why you are part-time in your service and your worship of him? Because your worship of him should not just be in his house Every now and then, you ought to get happy at home. Preach, Bishop. Some of y'all ain't saying that. Let me talk to this crowd over here. God is saying, in your house, you ought to get happy sometime. When you start thinking about the goodness of Jesus, it ought to bring forth a celebration. Without the band, without the praise team, without bishop, just when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Well, maybe right here, God is saying, listen, I need somebody that's sold out for me, that is covered by the blood of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying to those of us that are on this side, he says, I'm tired of you denying me. Or you delay. You don't just deny, but you delay my access in your life. Lord have mercy. God says, for some of you I've healed and you never said thank you. He said, for some of you, I brought about deliverance in your life. He says, as a matter of fact, and I don't know who I'm talking to, he says, I'm the one who kept you from going to jail. God is saying what happens is that we take the blessing of God as long as we are down, as long as we are low down, and as long as we are scratching the surface, we do whatever we believe God wants us to do. But the moment we get healed and the moment we get delivered, we take the blessing and the miracle of God and we leave his presence. Help me, Lord Jesus. I'm trying to help us today. And so God says, you've got to spend time now uh, dealing with this, this shift. This shift for the next movement. And so it was amazing to me prior to last week during the whole, as a matter of fact, last couple of weeks, God has been talking to me about about children, about youth, and about young adults. It's been amazing the deep conversations that we have had. You know what? Here's the thing that, is, that whenever God is talking, God says some stuff that is so convicting. That's the reason why God is saying, listen, that it's difficult to go into his presence and come out the same way. And so he says these words, and I'll dig into the text. He says, make a deposit into these armed babies, build a hedge around them because I'm going to guard them and protect them because I'm going to predestine them for some things. Some activity, some workings of the spirit. 
And I heard the Lord when he said, babies are innocent. You don't ever have to worry about them rejecting God. There's a surrender. Did you see these babies as they were giving speeches? You know, a lot of them had that cool modi that <laughs> left of that right hand in the pocket, head tilted, and left a right leg out. You know, that's when you know you got it going on. You, you're not doing nothing if you don't have one of those legs sticking out. Uh, when we were in school at Poly, you know, there was always some cats that was hanging on the wall and they always had one leg out. They always wore their hats tilted. I wish I had a witness. Somebody's in here this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. So God says, I want you to begin to deal with this. He says, because as, as things progress, he says, children are going to learn faster. They're going to receive a greater empowerment. And you got to build a hedge around them to block the enemy's uh, activity so that he can't take over territory. Which means that there's a priority and a responsibility that is upon you. But here's the second part he says you got to do. Over this past week, uh, we had uh, one member who, they're out of town this morning. But a part of their leaving, going out of town, was because a grandson decided to take grandfather and grandmother's life. Lord have mercy. The second reason this text is preaching is powerful because uh, we were in rehearsal on Thursday and uh, uh, Sister Minister in Training, Angela, uh, said these words. Love, is it? Yeah, said these words. What happens when a kindergarten flips a chair and is about to get suspended for an attitude that they have? Lord have mercy. See, sometimes you raise the question, well, why is he preaching that? It's for reasons like that. Just a couple of days ago, I was talking with a young man who said to me, he says, I need you to pray for me because for the first time in my life, I heard my baby girl, my daughter, snap at me. He furthered the conversation by saying, so, uh, so what would you, I said, first of all, Doris Faye Robinson wouldn't put up with that. Yeah, I remember one on one occasion, uh, I was, uh, Robert, I was, getting a, I was getting a whooping. And I was, I was running and moving. And so mama said, get, get down here. And so I'm getting on my knees and all that. The next thing I know, I got a chair sitting on my, on, up on me so I can't move. So, so I'll teach you to run. Now, I already know mama's gone. You know, that time has passed for child abuse, whatever. Give, give me a moment. I'm just, whoo, Jesus. I'm still trying to come out of canceling now. Somebody ought to help me. Lord have mercy. But, but God said this is the condition we're in. He said, and watch this. Here's what we often say. We often say words like, but you took prayer out of school. And God says, that may be true, but who took prayer out of your house? Yeah. 
You're talking about what somebody did legislatively in terms of a law or policy in terms of taking prayer out of school or giving the alternative that you got to pray by the flagpole. But God says, who took prayer out of your house? Yeah, the body of Christ has to be in that place where you say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God is saying, I'm moving on, but God is saying, pimp daddy, you can't just be daddy, pimp daddy. No, it's time for you to have a genuine relationship with God and you've got to elevate your child's and your children's respect because, not because my daddy knows how to lean. Leaning in the back. Y'all not hearing me. God says, if you're going to be a man, you need to be start with God. Yeah. Begin to have prayer time. Are you with me here? So God began to share with me. I said, Lord, what is my role in this? What is it that you want me to do? And he said, in this, this season, this is a now season. This is a now season, which means it's an emergency. It is an urgency. He says this is a place, a time where there is a spiritual potency. So I began to look, and God said in this text, in the development, that the word now is used in sentences like at this present time, a moment, where are you living? The word now is used especially in conversation to draw attention to a particular conversation. We have people who say, and of course, if you notice my preaching, I always say, I'm transitioning now. The whole purpose of that one little line is to help the congregation to know where I'm going in terms of the message because I want to make sure that I'm a tour guide through the word of God. I'm not leaving you to discover these things by yourself. Then God said to me in prayer, he says, this little word now is a very interesting word because it says at the present moment, at a time that has no delay. That the Holy Spirit began to move upon me and the writers, and he said throughout this season, he says that there has to be a now word that brings about conviction. That you need a word that it, when worship is over, it's still convicting. There's so many people in the body of Christ. We have an exciting spiritual moment in the act of worship. But as soon as the benediction is over, we go into a whole different place. And God is saying that we're in a space and a time where we've got to begin to deal with words from the scripture that deal with now. Lord have mercy. Then I began to look at what are called vital statistics. If you've ever looked at the Life Application Bible, the Life Application Bible has a section on the left side that gives what is the vital statistics of how that text and how that word comes about. Concerning this word, the Bible says the author is Jude, uh, who was one of the brothers of James, and the Bible gives this word that Jude then will be a half-brother of Jesus Christ. What is interesting is that the Bible says that Jesus' brothers really didn't get saved until after his resurrection. 
that while he was preaching and while he was teaching and sharing, they never believed. God said to me, sometimes the most difficult people to influence or persuade that there's something different happening in your life, it is people that's a part of your family. The unfortunate about that is that we can easily measure uh, what we are not, but we have a difficult measuring what we are. I heard the preacher on this past Friday when he was preaching. He says, people are wearing beautiful cross. They're wearing beautiful, gorgeous cross. And yet, their summer cross is Tim. They still have a man hanging on it. He said, but the cross is empty. He says, there's nothing gorgeous about the cross because the cross is bloody. Preach, man. Yeah, the Every one of us have had to go by the cross. We met Jesus because we went by the cross. We met Christ because we've been covered with the blood of Jesus. And what God is saying is that there are some people in 2024, they don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to hear about the crucifixion. They regard, disregard the resurrection and the ascension. And there are those that would rather say, we don't have to preach about the blood of Jesus. But if we don't preach the blood of Jesus, then what are we going to preach? If we don't talk about Jesus dying on the cross because it was a bloody situation, it was nasty, it was mean, it was horrible. But the Bible, they just said he was willing to die. I said he was willing to die. He didn't come down from the cross. Hallelujah. To save himself, he decided, he decided to die. You begin to look at Acts chapter 1 verse 14. It informs us that Jesus' brothers were really a part of the upper room prayer. They, they were upstairs. They were in that room when the presence of the Lord uh, came in. So here's my first transition. Lord have mercy. The word now is a word of sacrifice. Oh, my God. Can I help you? Listen to what the Bible says, verse 24. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault. Lord have mercy. See, sometimes we focus more on on our lack, we focus more on sin, and we never ever give God credit that the blood of Jesus is 100%. So the Bible gives that word, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And here's what I like about God. The Bible says that if you confess your sin before him, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Now, here's the truth. The truth of the matter is I can wake up and you can wake up in the morning saying that we're going to do everything God wants us to do. But somewhere between coming from up under the cover, putting our feet on the ground, we done changed our mind because sin and the flesh has overtaken. And God is saying, he says, because I knew that you couldn't handle it by yourself, what I did was I provided a better way. I became your propitiation. I became your substitute. So you didn't have to die on the cross, but that I sent my son to die on the cross. And even Jesus, the Bible says of him on the cross, he says, I'm happy hanging here and it doesn't look like my father cares as a matter of fact he said these words father cares thou not what these people are doing to me and the bible says and God said not a word he didn't say a word because he knew that the end result was somebody had to die and he knew that Jesus' death on the cross would be temporary
Maybe this sermon is for on the road. We start talking about the death of Jesus being temporary. Everybody ought to be shouting. Help me, Lord Jesus. Uh, man of God, I'm, man, I'm telling you, this whole week I've been listening to preaching, so I, invariably I may use some of their stuff. The next time I preach it, I'll call it mine. I had one guy who said this word. He says that people will try to hide the truth. He said, but how are you going to hide this, the truth in a borrowed grave? Bring me my cane. I'm sitting down. He said, there's no way to keep silent on truth when you put Jesus in a tomb that was borrowed because he understood he wasn't going to need it long. I wish you had a witness in here because what he says is that although you and I have sinned and come short of the glory of God, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God is saying to you and I, even on this day, we don't have to belabor the crucifixion and the cross. As a matter of fact, we ought to be preaching that every Sunday. I, I, was, I was in a conversation, this is some years ago, and they said, you know, the reason why I don't go to church is because sooner or later they're going to always go to the cross. What else, what else are we going to go? That's a better testimony than no testimony. Second part of that is powerful because there is this word that I call now the nowness of God. Help me, Lord Jesus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand uh, that the worlds were formed on just the word of God. I mean, have you ever really looked at Genesis when the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It wasn't that God used his hands to sculpture out for us a world. It was that he used his word to sculpture out a world. Because what the Bible says, he thought something, apostle, he said something, and it manifests. So God is saying for you and I that we can help change the, the condition of the world with his word. That's the reason why you got to put a guard around your family, these babies that are being born. God is saying you got to speak into their life. I mean, when they go to bed at night, they ought to be listening to some kind of message from for children and youth. Sometimes they ought to be listening to some songs uh, that help them to build. But if all we give them are world, worldly songs, uh, they'll never have a greater relationship with God. Because if you don't feed your spirit, man, you can't keep feeding your flesh and not feed the spiritual man and think you're going to be all right. I give you one reason why you ought to feed your children spiritual food because the day will surely come when you and I won't be here and they need to know how to bow under God. They need to know how to have a conversation with God right now for those times when burdens are hard to bear. They need to know right now, say right now. When the trouble's on every hand, they need a now word. 
God, God, oh my God, since y'all ain't saying that, they need a now word, a word of conviction, a word of dedication, a word that will separate them for God's uses. You ought to help me say, they need a now word. I said a now word. They need a now word. A now word. A now word. Help me, Lord Jesus. And the Bible in, in Hebrew says it further. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Help me, Lord God. You know, I'm preaching this word today because I want to create in your appetite, your spiritual appetite, a yearning for more and more of God's food. Oh, my God. Is that Sister Ali uh, back there? Well, maybe not. I'm looking through this crowd and saying, but, but what is amazing is that sometimes you got to labor in prayer. There's some time we got to put some time in. Lord Jesus, these young men, y'all ought to still be praising. These young men, you don't just make the honor roll. No, you got to make up your mind that that's what you want. And so you got to surround them with prayer. And here's my word to you. Maybe your, maybe your baby boy or baby girl is old as dirt, but still grab a hold of their feet and begin to pray, Father. Maybe, maybe, maybe they made some major mistakes, but still grab a hold of them and pray for them. As a matter of fact, if you want to make a difference, grab a hold of them and say, I'm not going to let you go until God bless you. You got to put your arms around them and you got to love them enough that you're willing for the anointing that is on your life to make a difference in their life. Ah, so there is, there is this word that now is a sacrifice. And then there is this now in terms of what God uses uh, to help us to bloom and to blossom because our appetite changes. Uh, but then there is the nowness of God based upon Hebrews 11. But watch this, it's powerful because 1 John talks about the fact that we are sons. Daughters. God says, you got to declare sonship. Oh yeah, listen, you own your child. Because God is giving you the power to give birth to them. But you got to love them enough to give them back to God. Come on, I don't mean no harm, but I got to tell you, you can't be your, bo your son's buddy and your friend, your daughter's uh, girlfriend. It's a place of time where children need to know how, how to distinguish who's in authority. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. You're not saying anything, but God is saying in this season, you're going to have to stand up and be the parent God has made you to be. Watch this. And being the parent who God has made you to be is not in what you are able to do for them in terms of worldly possessions. Dr. Major Jemison, St. John Church in Oklahoma City, was a member of the Concord Baptist Church all while he was in school at Bishop College, and he went off to pastor in, uh, in Oklahoma City. He said when the word came to him that Dr. Bailey was sick and potentially about to die, 
He said, I made every effort to get to the place where it was. He says, finally there on the bed, the bedside, he says, I'm talking, I'm talking to pastor and he's unable to respond. But it's clear that he hear me. Oh my God. And he says, I said these words to pastor. I'm, I'm going, whatever I can do, I'll make sure that I do my part at still being a spiritual son. I'll make sure that I do everything in terms of priority to hold you up in all uh, capacity for what you have taught me as a preacher, as a Christian, and as a believer in Christ. And he said, Dr. Bailey looked, opened up his eyes and turned in his direction while he was taking his last breath. He said, thank you. And he went home to be with the Lord. Yeah, you ought to want your child or your children to be satisfied with what they've given you in terms of Jesus Christ. You, yeah, we want them to have all of these things, but we do all of that and never give them Jesus Christ. We do all of that and never feed them the word of God. So when life is over, they're broken and they're distraught and they're in despair and they struggle with life. You got to make sure that your baby boy or girl has a strong relationship with God. Children ought not have to second guess whether we go into church today. See, so y'all and change y'all feeling about me. They shouldn't, they, they shouldn't have a choice. No, if God is bringing them into the world, they need to know who did it. It wasn't their alarm clock. It was Jesus that touched them with a finger of love and quickened them to a brand new day so that their bed wasn't their cooling board. I wish I had a witness. If you don't teach them to thank God now, not just in church, but in house, in their bedroom, in the living room, in the bathroom, in the front yard, in the backyard. You got to teach them how to tell God thank you right now because the day will come when God will want to hear the blessings that come out of your mouth. Oh my God. I have people sometimes say, do you have to preach that same thing? Yes, I do. Because I was broken and I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. And if you upset about that, you don't have a problem with me. You got a problem with God. Go on and talk about me just as much as you please. But the more you talk, the more I'm going to sit on my knees. And when I get up, oh my God. Yeah, Jesus. I said when I get up. When I get up, my eyes may be weeping uh, with tears, but when I get up, whatever it was that took me to my knee, I may have gone to my knees because I was sad. I may have gone to my knees because I was broken. I may have gone to my knees because the world was shifting and changing on me. But something about getting on my knees, something about bowing before God, that when I came out of prayer, God made me feel better. Lord, I wish I had. Has God ever made you feel better? God ever done anything in your life that you're thankful for? I'm talking about when you think about it, that I could have been a drug addict. It wasn't because I was displaced from that, but because I was in and around it. Somehow or another, God kept me away from it. As a matter of fact, if the truth be told, I wanted to be a gangster. I wanted to sell drugs. I needed some extra money. But every time I thought about going to the street, every time I thought about participating in that, God began to block the way. And when he blocked it, he had some conversation with me. 
So I made up my mind, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. You ought to be helping me now. There's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Lift up your head all oh, ye gates be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in has God ever showed up in your life has God ever invaded the premises of your life because nobody can stop you like God Nobody can put you on hold like God. No, nobody can protect you like God. Nobody can rescue you like God. And here's what I hear the Lord saying. He says, young adults, it's time that we talk again. He says, young adults, it's time that you feel and sense my spirit again. Young adults, it's time that you praise him out of control. Ridiculous praise. What God is saying in this season, he needs some young adults that will hold up their hand and be used by God. But then he says, youth, teach the children. Train up a child in the way they should go and if they get it they will not depart can I get one witness can I pause and tell you I'm glad that God set me on fire when I was a little boy in church I felt the presence of God I knew this had to be something that was different about my relationship because I began to shout and I must have been out of control but I remember them lifting me up taking me out of the building because I was shouting and praising the Lord and I need every young man to know there's nothing wrong about you getting happy if you love him you ought to show some sign I need every young lady to know it does not disrespect you as a matter of fact if you praise him you have a better selection of men to choose from can I get a witness if you praise him, God will come to your rescue. Lord, I wish I had one witness. If you praise him, God has a way of making everything turn around in your favor. Is there anybody here know anything about the favor of God? The favor the favor the favor will show up in a place before you get there favor will keep you protected from what you left favor will protect you right where you are I'm so glad that I got favor on my life. Aren't you glad? Favor, grace, love, joy, peace, and long suffering. But I'm here to tell you, there is nobody like Jesus. Come on, shout it out. When I call his name, there ought to be a shifting in the atmosphere. All right, let's try it. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, let's 
Let's try Jesus. Lily of the valley. She is bright in morning star. She is bread when I'm hungry. She is what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege it is to carry. Not something, but everything to the Lord in prayer. Won't God do it? Can I give my testimony? When I was sitting right there, I began to pray because my hip has been bothering me all day. But the apostle laid hands on me and began to pray for me. What I know about Jesus, he may not come when you want him, but he'll always be on time. Is there anybody know my Jesus? Anybody in the room know my Lord? Can you say yeah? Yeah. Come on, y'all too quiet. I gotta tell you, on Friday, he died. On Saturday, he went in the tomb, went down to hell, and preached a revival, and grounded up the gifts of the Spirit. And he said, come on, let's get out of here. I got work for you to do. And he took the gifts and gave them to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. But I got to tell you, this is Easter Sunday morning. I got to tell you that early, He got up. Here's what my granny said. Baby, he walks with me. And every now and then, he tells me that I am his own. And the joy, joy, joy that we share, none other have ever known. Can I get a witness? Can I go on and tell you? And will you help me close when I tell you? I, 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 I know he's all right. I, I know he's all right. Come on, I thought you were going to help me. I, Again, one more witness. I'm closing out, but I gotta tell you, there's something about Sunday morning. Sunday morning will calm your fears. Sunday morning will soothe your doubt. Sunday morning will give you the joy that you need. Can I get a witness? Somebody ought to shout when Sunday comes. All my heavy burdens. When Sunday comes, all my tribulation will be laid at the altar. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together here. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. When Sunday comes, my 
listen. Listen, let me share with you. This time is so, so important to me. In the first place, I want to encourage you that if you have um, slips of paper that you can write down again that specific prayer that you have. That's the first thing. But then secondly, I remember so well when when I was a little boy growing up in Greater Mount Tabor that the Lord visited my dreams the night, that Saturday night. And the Lord began to show me that when I got to church the next day and when I walked down the aisle, that I would begin to talk or begin to speak, really just telling the congregation what God had shown me. Somewhere in the dream, between my sleep and waking up, the Lord showed me that when I began to extend the invitation, that the altar would be full. I got to church that Sunday, Sunday morning, and I, I didn't do it. I ran away from the Lord for the worship because I was afraid to tell people what I had seen in my dream. I wasn't, I didn't have the holy boldness. I didn't have, you know, whatever you're supposed to have at that young age. So I left church during the invitation time that morning. But when I came back to church that night and I came down the aisle and I began to talk about what God had shown me, that Sunday morning, well, that Sunday night, the altar was filled with children and youth and young adults and even adults. Lord have mercy. And the Lord showed me this week, as a matter of fact, I've been in prayer all week, but the Lord showed me this week that first and foremost, he said, there will be a greater number of mothers and fathers or parents with armed babies. God said, call them to the altar first. And so I want to encourage you, if you're here this morning, you got a baby in your arms or you got a young child that's still growing in development that you will come and meet me here at the altar. Yeah. Come on, don't be afraid of that. you remember at the opening of the message I talked about a baby girl in kindergarten who flips the chair over and was in a spot of place to literally deal with potentially suspension or uh, in-house suspension and so I'm encouraging you, if you're, you're here and you've got children in elementary school, come on, meet me at the altar this morning. You've got children that are in pre-K, come on and meet me at the altar, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let me 
just share with you. Let me just share with you that uh, in my spirit of the sermon, I hear you're not saying it out loud, but it's in your mind. And you said, I wish he'd come on. Well, if it was your child flipping a chair. If you were the parent that had to deal with a child or a grandchild that ended up, I'm saying no, I said change it up, but not that. You were, had to, as a grandchild, had to deal with a parent, a grandparent being killed by your grandson or daughter, you'd want me to take time. Now there's some of you, you're not, you're just not, not in arm babies, you are, you've got kids that are in elementary or pre-K. You got some youth, you got some young people who are at that teenage age The last illustration I gave was of that, that young man who said his daughter raised her voice. She spoke harshly to him. He said, I never did that to my mother. I never made that kind of choice or decision. Lord have mercy. And so I want to encourage you because I believe that God is able to set captives free. That's it, that's it. You're not a, a child, you're not in pre-K, elementary, middle school, but you're in high school. Come on to the altar. Agree. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every keep be supplied. We are important to me. I need you to survive. Come on, say that. right now or you have completed and you're moving in terms of a place of career I'm encouraging you to come on come on to the altar I pray for you pray for you pray for me
having conversations with parents who are now saying, this one mother who's, the daughter died and now she's moving in the place of walking through that process, making college decisions and making choices. The woman of God said, I thought that day was over for me. But the truth of the matter is, sometimes our children would die before we do. Some of it comes by in part because of choices and decisions. Others come because somebody is jealous or someone has hate and hatred. Lord have mercy. If you, maybe you don't have any of that. But you ought to be praying that God would wrap his arms of protection. That word I release now says that God is ready and willing to guard you. To guard and protect your children. Do you know the real deal is that when they go off to school, you can't sit in every class. There has to be a place in time when you've got to put not just your trust in them, but you got to put your trust in God. God is saying in this season, the word now, it's an urgency. It is an emergency. Oh my God. A few weeks ago, we began to talk about who's in in-house suspension. Who is it that is not being tossed out of the class and the school because they still want the numbers to count? Help me, Lord Jesus. And I'm saying to you today, you got to spend some time in prayer. It's not just a conversation going to have to, I mean, texting and calling. Man, call those children to that house. Sit down and talk to them about the relationship that they have with the Lord. They got this commercial that goes on about these parents who talk about their children who don't vape. Oh, that's not my child. He doesn't do that. And the truth of the matter is, man, they vaping and everything else. Watch this. God says, if you don't say it, who's going to say it? Hallelujah. If you don't take on the responsibility as a parent, who's going to do your job? Can't leave them alone. You got to love them enough that you care enough for them. Fathers, man, grab a hold of those boys, grab a hold of those girls, and pray for them. Help me, Lord Jesus. When is the last time you hugged your son or daughter? When is the last time you told them that you love them? I want the best for you. Help me, Lord God. Come on, right where we are, heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Father in heaven, I thank you right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. God, I really didn't know. I still don't know how this turns out. I just know that all this week you've been causing me to pray for children and youth and for young adults and for adults. You, you gave me this sermon. You breathe the fresh that we're in a season of now. Hallelujah, God. And there are so many passages in the Bible, Lord, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. 
And I bless you and I praise you, God, for even in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Elijah had died and his bones were in the grave. And there was a man that had been killed. And so what they did was they threw him in the grave with the bones of Elijah. And your word says he came back to life. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, every child, all children, youth and young adults will come back alive. God, we really need some people that are on fire, that are not ashamed or, ashamed or afraid to worship you in public, God. Oh, Lord, move in this house, house right now. And I pray at this altar right now, God, for a fresh wind and fire to blow upon and breathe upon every person that's standing here. Every parent, oh God, every grandparent in the name of Jesus. Let today be a day that changes their convictions about life so that they look at life from a different perspective. Oh, Father God, we love you now. Oh, God, we love you right now. These armed babies. You said in this season, this shifting, you're going to make impartation and you're going to cause them, oh God, to move to the place of predestination, what you have destined them to be or to become. And I declare in the name of Jesus, some of them, God, will start preaching early. They will sing early. They will become active in the things of the spirit early they'll begin to move under the power of the holy ghost so much so that it's going to shake us to our fiber and our being because we're going to be excited to know that you are using them at that age i pray right now god my hand is upon every head and upon every heart I pray right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you're bringing about great conviction so that not just adults, but the babies are being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Touch right now, God. Save right now. Redeem right now. Rescue right now. Oh, Lord, do it right now. You, you said it was an urgency. You said it was an emergency. Do it right now, God. Don't let anybody leave this altar in the same way or the same condition. Change their whole mindset about you, God. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, if not at the altar, that you will visit them in their home. If not at the altar, you will visit them in their bedroom. If not at the altar, you'll visit them in their kitchen at the food table. If not at the altar, in their living room or even in their bathroom, God, make your presence known. Manifest yourself in such a way that they know, God, that I'm not just praying a prayer and this sermon is not just for Easter and resurrection, but it's a word, God, that is moving them, shifting them to a new place in you. I pray over careers, decisions right now. I pray right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, the value that you have in the life of, of children and the value that you have in the life of youth and the value that you have in the life of young adults. And the value that you have in the life of adults. Now God, I pray right now. As I prepare to close out this prayer. I want to make sure that I lay hands on every. Every person at this altar. Whether it be through a handshake or. Just my touching them on the shoulder. I lay my head on their head. Nobody will leave the altar without connecting with me. God, your anointing is on my life today. And I thank you, Lord. I believe you, God. 
in the wonderful name of Jesus. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray and we ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. Now listen, here's what I need. I need elders uh, to help me right here. Everybody from the altar is going to begin to move to your right, which means that we're going to begin to form a line where I'm praying. I'm just shaking it. Listen, I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not casting out devils today. But I am laying on hand. I am shaking hands. So I need help in arranging so that there's a flow that we're not holding up. And please let me ask you to do this. As we move forward, please return to your seat. Today I want us to receive the benediction together on this Easter Resurrection Sunday. That we don't just walk out, but that we leave together with the benediction from the Lord. Amen. That's even after we give. Go back to your seat. Come on, be patient with me. I'm just following the lead of God. Amen. All right. So everybody's going to be shifting to the right. I'm coming here. Amen. said in your word obedience is better than sacrifice thank you lord jesus hallelujah need you to god bless you oh my god thank you lord jesus words from my
Praise the Lord, everybody. How we bless and praise our God. How excellent is his name in all of the earth. I believe that God started the shifting today. I believe that. Just one other word. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to encourage you to come. We don't want you to leave here in that condition. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that you can be saved. These individuals that are standing now are standing in the aisles so that you won't have to walk by yourself. I know it's taken a minute, but we did a lot today. It takes a lot to turn a ship around. Amen. And I thank you for being patient today. If you're here, you know, Bishop, I want to be saved. I've, I've never made that public confession. I'm encouraging you to make that today. Secondly, you're here and you say, I'm already saved, but I've been looking for the right church or the place to connect with. Let me just share with you, there is no perfect church, but we have a perfect God. Amen. And so we're encouraging you to connect today. You have come in as a guest. Our prayer is that you will leave as part of this family. And I'm encouraging, will you come today? Will you make the Lord a choice for yourself? Come on, will you come today? Come on, don't, let's give the devil a black eye. Come on, is there another? Will you come? Come on. You are worthy to pray. Come on, there are others. Will you come today? We have a wonderful team that will explain to you the plan of salvation. We also have a great team that will help you to make that specific connection. So I'm encouraging you today. Hallelujah. There may be another three individuals in here. God has spoken to your heart and this is not the day you won't put God on hold. God has so, so much more for you today, today. So I'm encouraging you to get up from where you are. This team will walk with you. Will you come today? Yes. Jesus. Come on, the invitation is ours to extend. It is yours to accept or reject. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, as we are preparing to worship with our giving, okay, they just gave me some more money for stage time. Nobody left. If you were with me at stage time, come on and get this blessing from the Lord. This is an overflow. They have, they have names on them. They have names on them. Do they have names on them? Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. 
I know that's right. Somebody ought to be saying, boy, next, next time I'm going to have my baby boy girl up for stage time. You know it gets better later. Amen, amen. So as we're preparing to worship with giving, listen, we've been, amen, thank you. We've been doing a lot of uh, repairs and stuff at our Watauga campus, and I'm asking you to help us out today. Amen. Amen. That means that you're going to give above tithes and offerings. Man, I don't know. While we get quiet, we start talking about money. God has blessed you with an amazing job. You got a fabulous car. You got a wonderful house you live in. Your job is off the chart. Amen. So I'm saying give back to God today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can he? Come on down. That's what I'm talking about. Man, thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow, wow. That's what I'm talking about. Bless the Lord. So listen, remember my first request was that if you have a specific prayer, uh, I think they have the containers on the ends. So write that down. Okay, you got that. Thank you. So when you come around, if you will put your special prayer request in that container. We have the same one? All right. All right. That's fine. All right. I want you to do that. And then uh, make sure, again, that we give extra in the tithes and offerings. Amen? All right. Uh, let me offer a word of prayer. And we're going we're gonna to come. I said that we're going to wait for the benediction, but my feet tired. So come by and shake my hand all your way out. Amen. We need a foot washing service. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all don't remember that. We had a foot washing service. <clears throat> Came when we were doing the foot washing, I got a chance to sit down. Amen. Yeah, so um, come on, don't, don't make me labor long. Amen. All right, those of you in the balcony, you can already begin to move. Father, we bless you and praise you, God, for the giving today. And we thank you, Lord, for overflow and increase. We thank you for abundance today in Jesus' name. Do not allow any person to suffer, not any single individual Oh God, to go without because of their love of you and their commitment to give into your kingdom. As a matter of fact, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will bless Brother Joshua Dees. Giving back to you, God. Bless him and then cause others to join in. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, Elder is going to give that uh, giving. Our giving confession. We are believing God for businesses, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses. Those that are in the balcony, come on. Benefits, glory to God. Sales and commissions, favorable settlements, Estates and inheritances, interest and income, yeah. rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, hallelujah, bills decreased, blessings and increase, debt free living, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you. 
I bless you. Amen. Hey, bud. Good to see you. Amen.